In this presentation, I'm going to show you how to create ODBC data source names, or DSNs, using the multi-tier admin assistant. I'm working with a Mac, but the steps I'm demoing can be performed on Windows, Linux, and Unix clients as well. The admin assistant is a web-based GUI interface that ships with our multi-tier server components. While users associate the admin assistant with the configuration and troubleshooting of our broker and agents, you can also use it to set up data sources. These data sources will appear in the odbc.ini file local to the box that runs the request broker. Therefore, you may only want to use the assistant to sanity test your multi-tier server components functionality. Alternatively, you can install additional request broker components in your environment to enable admin assistant functionality on other boxes, or you can investigate use of our standalone HTTP-based IODBC data sources administrator for similar functionality without multi-tier server components configuration capabilities. Before we begin, I presume that you know some basic information about your progress database. Specifically, you need to know if it's running in sockets or shared memory mode. If it's running in sockets, know the socket service associated with the database. You also need to know whether it's accepting SQL 89 connections, SQL 92 connections, or both. I also presume that you have installed our multi-tier server components and know the host name of the machine containing them and the various TCP ports that they use for answering ODBC requests and displaying the admin assistant GUI. Now, once you have your basic database information and you have your multi-tier server components in order, you can start. First, you want to open the admin assistant in a web browser. To bring up the admin assistant, you pass http colon forward slash forward slash followed by the name of the machine that hosts the open link request broker. Type a colon then the port number on which the admin assistant listens and hit enter. Click Client Components Administration. Click Configure ODBC Data Sources by Wizard. Click Configure ODBC Data Sources. Notice these two data source names that appear here. These are actually template DSNs. One uses the non-Unicode driver, the other one uses the Unicode driver. You can always configure one of these DSNs and click configure to make it your own. For the purposes of the demonstration, I'm going to bypass the two templates. I'm going to click the add button and I'm going to create a data source name from scratch. Here you see I have a choice. I can choose the Unicode driver or the non-Unicode driver. This Unicode driver here is only useful if you're working with multi-byte character sets. If you're not, just go with the default ASCII driver as I'm doing here. Click Create DSN. Name takes a suitable title for your DSN. You want to keep it brief and don't use any special characters. Description is optional. You can use it to write a reminder regarding the nature or intended use of this DSN. Server takes the host name of the machine hosting OpenLink's multi-tier server components. followed by a colon, and the TCP port on which the request broker listens. Click Next. Domain. This is a specialized OpenLink parameter. Use the drop-down to select Progress 100 SQL for all Progress 10 SQL 92 connections. See that here? You would want to choose Progress 91 SQL for all Progress 9 SQL 92 connections. That value appears down here. Now, if you're establishing SQL 89 only connections because you're working with array data, table view, distributed connectivity, triggers, you would select the entry that corresponds to your OpenLink agent version. For example, if you have one of OpenLink's Progress 
91D SQL 89 agents and you wanted to use it to connect to Progress 91D, you just go and you would select this entry here. If you had the same Progress 91D agent and you wanted to connect to a Progress 91E database, don't make the mistake of choosing Progress 91E because that's the target database version. You would stick with Progress 91D because that's the name of the the name and version of the SQL 89 agent that you have. Now we're going to connect to Progress 10 using SQL 92. So I'm going to go back up and I'm going to select my first value which is the Progress 100 SQL database. This takes the name of your target database, pass the full path to databases hosted on Unix or Linux, passage of a database name only with the .db extension is often sufficient only when the database is hosted on Windows. DB connection options take socket parameters when the database is actually running in sockets mode. The convention is minus capital S followed by the actual service name. You can pass the actual port number, although it's less common, followed by space minus capital N space TCP space minus capital H space and the name of the machine that hosts your database. Ensure the connect now box is checked. Use the username and password fields to pass a username and password for databases as needed. Note that while many SQL 89 databases are unsecured, all SQL 92 databases require a username at least. Click next. The fact that you have arrived at this screen with these advanced DSN configuration parameters is a good sign. The driver has performed a rudimentary test connection and it would not have brought us to this screen if the, um, the basic connection had not worked. You would have received an error instead. Now as I said, these are advanced parameters. We're not going to discuss these at, at this time. We're going to leave them for a later video. We're just going to click Next. We want to click Test Data Source. And as you can see, we have established a connection. And this data source name, or DSN, is available for use. This concludes this lesson.